It's good you came. Amen. It's good you came. We are looking at the role of a godly woman in the family. And then we also try, in fact, I'm not preaching. We also try and look at um, causes of broken marriages and homes. In fact, God instituted marriage. And God had a purpose for instituting marriage. In fact, most Africans traditionally think that, oh, it's because of children, you know. That is why God instituted marriage. So when you get married and then Africans, I mean, that is our perception. When you get married and then maybe three to four years, or even sometimes six months, um, you know, then your, your body is not changing. Then they begin to ask questions because they think that it is children that cements the marriage. But I just want to tell you that the main purpose for which God instituted marriage was for companionship. In fact, we as human, God created us as relational beings. He created us as relational beings. And therefore, and it gets to a point in your life that you would want to relate. It is not a sin. It is because God created us in that manner. Hallelujah. And so everybody will marry except those who have been um, commissioned to be Enoch's. Amen. And I don't believe that we have any Roman father or Roman sister in this house. Do we have any Roman father or sister? It means that we are all going to marry. Please, how many of you are, are, of us are not married yet? Beautiful. And I believe that one day we would want to marry. Very soon we would want to marry. And those who are married, we will also understand that God instituted marriage for companionship. For companionship. Not just for making babies. That one is a blessing. The Bible says that God, when God said that let us make man in our own image and in our likeness, when it comes to Genesis chapter 1, from verse 18 and then 19, thereabout, and then after God had made everything, he blessed them and said, be fruitful and multiply. So it is a blessing. Children are blessing. But that is not the focus of marriage. And so companionship is very, very important in marriage. And for my dear sisters who are not married, let me tell you, you can't marry somebody who is not your friend. That marriage can never be sustained. Somebody who is not a friend. Because marriage is all about friendship. If you're not ready, if you you, you, you can't be a friend of that partner, you can't marry that partner. You can't because it's all about friendship. It's about companionship, sharing your lives together. I mean, pouring your whole life and then your partner to pour in his whole life and merging the two lives together to become one. Amen. That is marriage. Until you get to that level, you can never enjoy marriage. You can never enjoy marriage. So understand. In fact, God's purpose for instituting marriage is good. Okay. I wouldn't say it was good. It is still good. Okay. It's still good. Okay. You okay. know, when you look at how okay. the function is, God made the man, He made the woman, and then He joined them together. Mm-hmm. When you read Genesis chapter 2, verse 24, the Bible says that, and after God had made them, he said, therefore shall a man leave his father and mother and shall cleave unto his wife and they shall become one flesh. So God gave principles. There is an aspect of living. There is an aspect of cleaving. And then there is an aspect of becoming one flesh. You know, God did not just institute marriage and then left it alone. He gave us principles. And if you, 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 you are studious and then you, you follow the principles of God, you will really enjoy marriage. In fact, I always say this, and wherever I stand, I will say it. That, you know, because God is preparing us, the 
church as a bride. And he is the bridegroom. He's going to marry us in heaven. That is why we are not going to marry in heaven. I would have married my husband again. Amen. We, we are not married for long. Okay. Just 20 years. Wow. Yes, just 20 years. Amen. Yeah, we just celebrated our 20th anniversary in September. Hallelujah. Yeah. And we have only five children. Oh. Praise God. Wow. And I tell you, I'm now enjoying marriage. Yeah. I am now enjoying marriage. Why? Because we have decided to go according to the principles of God. Okay. The principle of living. Okay. He says, for this reason, a man will live. Even the closest friend, mother and father. Okay. The closest relationship. God says that you must live. It doesn't mean that you should be at loggerheads with your parents when you are getting married. No. But it means that become an independent person. Somebody that you can take decisions on your own. Somebody that you will not depend on your parents to, 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 to do what? To decide for your family. But you are on your own. It doesn't mean you shouldn't um, take the uh, uh, what, um, advice of your parents. No, but you should be your own man. You should be your own woman. There are people, they are married, but they are still claim to their family that uh, when, sometimes your husband will tell you, oh, as for today, I like English breakfast. Then somebody will say, let me go and ask my mother if I should give you English breakfast to that extent. There are some people, when it comes to decision making in their life, they are still clear to their family. They want to bring third parties into the marriage. If you do that, you are not going according to the principles of God. So you are not enjoying marriage. But if you decide that I am living, and it's not just the man, the woman too is supposed to live. Now when you marry, your partner becomes your number one best friend. Yes, you have best friends. It doesn't mean that you should be a longer hands with them. No. But know that the, your, your number one priority in life is your partner. Thank you. When you get to that level, then you are following the principles of God. Right. And it is at that point that you can cleave onto your partner. When you leave, you'll be able to cleave. Cleaving means that thinking together. Taking decision together. I will not do anything without my partner's knowledge. I'm not hiding anything from my partner. Because we are one. We have shared our bodies. So why can't we share our bodies? Okay. Hello. Hi. Hello. Hi. The Bible says money is the fruit of all evil. Can you imagine? I have offered my whole body to you from head to toe, in fact, from the crown of my head down to the sole of my feet. Everything I've been able to offer unto you. Why can't I offer my pocket? Hello? Hi. Have we thought of that? When it comes to that level, you're, 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 I know a couple that their mother came to visit them in in, in UK here and then the mother told the, 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 the lady, uh, when it comes to money issues everybody should keep his or her money okay you should keep your money how possible how possible we are claiming together means that we are doing everything together and it is when you come to that level that you can become one flesh so you look at some couples, Open Your Children will tell you, one uh, married counselor in Ghana, he will tell you that, ah, you see, he, I can't remember the first day he met myself and my husband about 10 years ago, he said that, hey, you people, you have to go and, uh, and really research. You might be um, his, his brother, <laughs> his sister. Yes, he told us that we, it, it, it could be possible that we are, I mean, we, we share a relation because he thinks we resemble each other. You know, when you are becoming one flesh, you think together. You do everything together. And even you resemble each other. Yes. Hallelujah. And that is the level that the Lord wants us to go. So you know, when God created marriage, 
and gave us all these principles. When you come to Ephesians chapter 5, verse 22, up to the last verse, it also tells us another principle that God has instituted. He gave the 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 the, 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 the marriage. What is it? Love. The levels. God is the head of the husband. The husband is the head of the wife. And God is our head. No law can cancel this principle because it is the law of God. No human institution, no human law can cancel this principle. The Bible tells me Maybe you think I, I'm just saying it. Can we read it? Ephesians chapter 5, verse 22. The Bible says what? Wives, submit yourselves unto your own husbands as unto the Lord. Can I? Um, can we go ahead? Uh-huh. For the husband is what? The head of the wife. Even as Christ is the head of the church. And he is the savior of the body. Can we continue? Therefore, as the church is subject unto Christ, so the wife to their own husbands in everything. Can we continue? Husbands, love your wives even as Christ loved the church and gave himself for it. It's very simple. So, this is the order. God husband, wife. As I told you from the beginning, I don't want to be a man. Because look at the responsibility. Husbands, love your wives, even as Christ loved the church and gave himself. In fact, when I go on my knees, I pray for husbands. Because to love your wife, as Christ loved the church, do you remember how Christ loved the church? He did what? He gave himself to the church, to the state of what? Dying on what? The cross. Naked. Shame for death. Have you watched Passion for Christ? Yes. It doesn't even match that all. What Christ went through. And if God is telling a husband to love the wife to that extent, I always put my hand on my head for husbands. It's not easy. And this can never be compared to what Christ told the wife. Verse 22. That wives submit yourself. Can you compare submission to dying? But you know, there are some women who don't want to hear submit. I can remember I was um, teaching on a radio program and then somebody called. We were talking about submission. And somebody called and said, in fact, when I hear the word submission, I want to vomit. You know, I don't even want to hear that word. Submission. Why should we? We also have our own right. Why should we submit to the man? I tell you, my dear sisters, nothing can change this. This is God's order. And I tell you, the responsibility of the husbands cannot be compared to we submitting to them. And the moment you decide to change the order, you will break your marriage. You will destroy the marriage. You will go contrary to the principle of God and the marriage will suffer. It doesn't matter whether you are footing all the bills. It doesn't make you a man. It doesn't matter whether you brought your husband to London. It doesn't make you a man. And my dear sisters, I don't want to dream to be a man because I can't obey sacrificing my life for my wife. That is why I always say that the Lord loves women. He loves us all. So when he he was even given responsibilities, he saw that we are weaker vessels. So he said that you, all that you have to do is to submit. Should that be difficult for you and I? Have you thought of that? And I tell you, if you learn this principle, it is by grace. 
and you decide to submit in the marriage, you know what happens? You go down for your husband. Oh, at times, you know, sometimes you 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 you, you argue. Okay, if you don't argue in the marriage, it means that you are pretending. At times it will come. You will argue here and there, but when you realize that, oh, the way is going, we have to give in. Give in. And you know what I will do? I will give in and go on my knees. Because sometimes what you are saying is very good. It will be helpful. But the man is saying this. No, I want us to do, go this way. What want us to do. Fine. Papa, let's go your way. But I will let my knees talk. Oh, Father Lord. Oh, Almighty Father, have your own way. Let your will be done. And I tell you, your knees can do the talking for you. Amen. Your knees can do the talking for you. You have submitted. You know, he also has a head. Christ is the head. And so, if He's not agreeing to you. What you have to do is to report him to his head. Amen. And then his head will do what? Will take control. Amen. And there will be peace and understanding. Amen. And the will of God will be established. And if we are to learn this, I tell you, we are going to enjoy marriage and love marriage. But talking about marriage in our era, if I should ask individually those who are not married, I know I will get somebody who will tell me that I don't even want to go there because of what we are seeing. The world has distorted marriage in our era. Can you think of the world even coming up with same sex marriage? But God in his own manly created male and female. Are we wiser than God? And if God instituted marriage and blessed us that we should continue life, same-sex marriage, if the whole world should turn into same-sex marriage, where would the children be? <laughs> Have they manufactured womb in a man? Can they insert womb? In the man, well, oh, I know they can take some medicines and then have breasts and have a, a flexible body. Like, I don't know, my one of my sisters who works at the hospital, she was sharing this with me about five years ago. That she was working here and there was a female kind of person that she was attending to, and they were looking for something a female feature. They search and search and search, they couldn't find. On the female of the bed. And so, wow. something that just pricked her, and then she asked, Are you a male or female? And then he said, I'm a male. Oh the world can never, never change what God has ordained. But that is what we hear. Now the world is telling you that, you know, you also have your rights as a woman. You know, you are even making much money. You know, and the world will even tell you that, come on, forget about this, ignore this, come, I'll give you a lot of benefits. And now the children of God are surrendering to the world, violating the honorable treated word of God. But remember, when he comes, and very soon he will appear, he's going to judge us based